Hey guys, Junger here with another installment of Juju Reviews, and today you're gonna notice something a little bit new. First thing, I gotta clean shave, clean shave, you know. I did it by accident, I didn't want to. We all know that there's only one way to shave a beard, and it's either by accident or if you have to do it for work. It just so happens to be the former. But now that you guys have gotten used to my cool looking new face, I got something to talk about. Something that I just finished. Uh, it's called Stranger Things on Netflix. It's a Netflix original series. And I gotta say, this thing was really freaking good. Now, I, I started hearing about this thing because first off, you go on Netflix, it's like one of the first thing that pops up. You know, self-promotion, Netflix gotta do it. And then I heard a couple friends talking about it at the movie theater and they were just kind of like, hey, you need to see this thing. So, you know, decide to check it out. And from the very beginnings of this show, Stranger Things like kind of plays like an old school Steven Spielberg flick. Now, Steven Spielberg, you know, he's famous for making like all these super great movies. But what he really does best at in his wheelhouse is those movies that are like kind of like based around children. So it's like these family friendly films that, you know, everybody can relate to and they just so happen to get these awesome child actors to come along for the ride. Now this show, it pretty much follows these four main kids who are nerdy and the whole thing's set in the 80s. That's another thing. It really like hits that 80s nostalgia. It follows these four really nerdy boys playing Dungeons and Dragons. They have Will, Lucas, Dustin, and Mike. Three of the boys go home. One of them does not return. And the whole series just kind of follows this kid and uh people just trying to look for him like trying to figure out what the hell happened to this kid so you got the police investigator the dude's name is hopper he's going on this journey to try and find this kid if you find some really shady stuff going on with the government at this time the mother is just going really crazy at this point and then the kids take it upon themselves to make a mission out of it and try to find their best friend along the way the kids find this really mysterious girl named 11 11 because she has a tattoo on her arm that says 11 and i guess that's the only name that they've ever given her that's the only name this girl has really mysterious telekinetic powers and this whole thing just becomes this weird twisty turny wibbly wobbly timey wimey thing i just wanted to use a doctor who quote in the middle of all this yes but the show is really good the first thing i want to talk about is the child actors that are in this these kids are maybe like around like 10 11 years old and these kids are straight killing it like usually when i see child actors you know you're kind of gonna get like a, oh they did serviceable they did a really kind of good job no, these kids were amazing. I'm surprised that they found actors this great that young. I mean, they kind of like make the make these kids relatable. They bring like nuance to the roles. Uh, the, the show kind of explores like what it's like growing up in that era while at the same time throwing them in this situation that they probably wouldn't know how to handle. But these kids are smart, the nerdiness pays off, and everything about it was great. That goes down to Eleven. Eleven doesn't say much through this series. Now, I think I can probably count like maybe like 20 words or maybe 30 words that she said throughout all eight episodes hour-long episodes by the way where sometimes she just doesn't talk at all but this chick like says a lot by saying very little and that says a lot from an actress her age and then we have our other actors who are pretty much playing the teenagers and there is a woman named nancy there's jonathan and then there's steve steve being the scumbag boyfriend nancy being the girl good girl that gets with him and jonathan being the outcast who takes a lot of creepy pictures of them for some reason. Now these guys also bring great gravitas to these roles and it's a it's really good to see like the interaction of teens being in the 80s like that was really nice to see. And then Winona Ryder plays the mother of Will who was kidnapped and she is she, this girl's good at playing crazy okay if you've seen her in Black Swan you've seen her in anything else this girl is great at being crazy. But not only is she crazy she's not crazy for crazy's sake she's crazy because she's a mother whose son was taken but it was taken by some unknown entity and when you try to explain that to people they don't really quite understand and she knows it you know she knows that this looks crazy but she's still kind of firm in her belief that this is what's happening so in order of playing both of those sides a crazy person but who has a good reason to be crazy like that's really awesome to see and then you got the shady government people because obviously they've done experiments they're looking for 11 and you know these people are just pretty much the shadow and i really didn't mind that i didn't mind that there wasn't a lot of um uh, in-depth exploration of who these people were. I mean, it kind of reminded me of E.T., again, tying it back to the Steven Spielberg days. Kind of reminded me of E.T. in the sense that the, through that whole movie, you never see another adult's face. You never see them from the waist up. And the only person, the only adult that you see is the mother. So 
it really reminded me of just this shady organization that you all you know is just to when you see them run so the villains didn't really bother me then there's this monster that is like very john carpenter guillermo del toro ish the monster is very scary it's very creepy and it kind of taps into our most primal fears of what lies in the dark things that we don't know about if it doesn't have a face then pretty much run again tying into steven spielberg and it's a really scary monster because they like use this little technique that every time you get a you try to get a look at it it's like in a weird camera angle or it's in a in the dark or the lights are flashing so you never get a clear look at what this monster really looks like but all in all man the the atmosphere the setting the characters the the overall story the story is very very gripping like it's made to be addicted to and it's made to be binge watched because once you watch one episode you're gonna want to watch the next one and the next one and the next one i think that's what netflix does best in all these shows so yeah stranger things dude like honestly i'm such a fan of this show i already made like my phone's like lock screen background into the poster which is really good by the way check that out well yeah guys if you've seen stranger things if you just seen some of it or all of it please let me know down in the comments down there and uh let's get to talking about let's let's start talking about it this show is like really phenomenal are you excited for season two what are your like thoughts on what season two could be like all right guys just remember i'm just a dude in this room talking to a camera love you and i'm out